A few years ago, I was a thinner, less abrasive version of my current self. My ears were finely tuned to the aerial waves that floated my way. That was until I discovered the bizarre world of Gunther Abbott. And my life got flipped turned upside down in the most remarkable of ways. And today, I finally get to meet him. Gunther Abbott sprayed onto the music scene in 1998 with his breakthrough album, Do Dreams Forgive Sins If You're Wide Awake? A toxic fusion of pop meets pop folkishness. From that point on, his world of audio-visual artistry has weaved its way through nearly two decades of unimaginable pleasure. But up to this point, no one has really seen or heard from him aside from marvelling at his creative dawdlings. A timid man, brave behind the lens and mic, yet a genius to those that know him, and even to those that don't. Gunther, may I start by saying it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. You know, to share a pot of tea in your company, to be welcomed into your life with open arms and a sturdy whimper. So your first record, Do Dreams Forgive Sins If You're Wide Awake, was uh, successful far beyond what even you could have imagined. At one point, outselling Waitrose Bread two to one. That is a, a staggering statistic. Was the success real? Did it damage you in any way? I was always ready for success. Some people are born that way. I was lucky because my face isn't the feature most loved by others. They were attracted to my raw sexual talent as opposed to my raw skin. This made me bleed more and more. Bleeding productivity. I was possessed by an invisible beast that drove me to become highly skilled in all manner of things. So it didn't hurt you uh, in any way? Not one bit. In fact, I found it quite seductive. Great art is to hate great art. To lose what makes it and start again. If you laid a pencil in front of me, I would draw with it. I would poke my leg. Then I would snap it in two, creating two pencils. I would then give you a pencil and suggest you sharpen it. Your music tells a story about you and planet Earth. What spunk that epiphany to make Locked in my brain. It was the song that gave me the insight into life. My head was filled with paranoid dazzles, and I could see it through the bathroom mirror in the mornings. A strange colour in my eye, a greenish bubble. That gave me the wisdom to show a bicycle. A rider moving through trouble, on and off the screen, to the left-hand side of the screen. By raising the platform through which the rider rode, I could transmit paths of joy into the viewer. And this is all I ever set out to achieve. He hasn't won it once. Policemen hear about it. A moving bicycle is infinitely faster than a stationary wagon. Locked in my brain. 
Is an ever-growing bubble getting ever slightly bigger I see it in the mirror, reflecting in my eye Soapy, silly spaces, I will die I love the characterisms uh, you found within the video, the song, the lyrics, all manifest to reach out and tell people, stop looking at my eye. It's very clever. Thank you. It needed to be said, to be honest. Some people don't like to acknowledge that rats live beneath them. People like that, they're of no use to me. Uh, speaking of other people, it's uh, not something that you do often. The moment that related your inept vision to the vision of the people. The moment when the world stood up and said, This guy is fantastic. They said I was God. That's not true. It's too short a word. I am good. Two tea flips a normal tea. Set in multi colors free. If you want web of teas for me, then maybe you need to tea. Tootie scan sweatshirt. Tootie scan stitcher. Wave it on the one side. Judge it on the flip side. Tootie flips a normal tea. Set in multi colors free. If you want web of teas for me, then maybe you need to tea. Two t shirts. Stick. The tutti came to me like a fart in the wind, so mellow but yet so naughty. But the design fulfills a fundamental lacking in the universe, the ding and the dong, two separate forces colliding to make one cohesive output. That is how we are all made, and I think you knew that all along. You just needed someone to show you. The impact the Tutti had on us all was of implausible projunctions. But you remained quiet and self-closed, delivering a steady chain of visual artistry throughout the noughties. It must only be assumed that you are a monster of art, devouring time with creations. Can Creating is a nonsense. I create creation. Creation is for gods, not people. People must work, build, and play. Imagination is something that happens in our heads, not our hands. We imagine it is there. I imagine you can draw, but you can't. You imagine you can build a plane. Well, go flip and build it then. So how do you build this uh, plane? What exactly are you thinking? I'm not thinking any more than I'm trying hard not to defecate. Thinking is in the mind, and I switch my mind off before I work. Anything like that has to be done without thinking about it. It is for the cause, and by the causer, anything else is neglectable. Let's talk about art, and in particular, your famous meat art. How did it make you feel when the Queen of England said she was a particularly big fan? I, I think even she made reference to wanting to eat herself. <laughs> but was it strange making such a controversial product only for the portrayed exploitative to fully their appreciation of it? I think it was satisfying to please everyone. I think you want to please everyone in your work. Not everyone can please everyone, and not everyone can be pleased. So to please the pleased is a lot simpler than pleasing everyone else. So does that mean you're happy? No, 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 no. Life is too short for happiness. Happy is how you describe a goat that has not yet been slaughtered. But I am content. Very. And that's way more valuable. Gump forever, you were and still are my eternal hero. I'd like to thank you very much for your time, your patience and your wiseness. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, thank you. You are most welcome. 
It's a difficult one to put your finger on. The great majesty of Gunther's work is enough to inspire as well as bewilder even the harshest of critics. Yet the man behind the art is an intriguing subject himself. He sits, he waits, he barely does anything at all to physically prove that he can do anything at all. Yet something stirs, something us ordinary folks just can't see. Behind those placid eyes lies a Trojan of our era, a Nero in disguise, a man so covertly intent on beguiling us with subtle imagery, it begs the question, was it all just a momentary chuckle behind the lying eyes of Gunther Vapor?